Hi, I'm Charles Deering, and I wanted to talk to y'all about spiral blades. Now, some people are scared to death of them, and I want to alleviate some of those fears. One of the first things they say is it, it's so aggressive. Now, compared to a flat blade, you think about it, a flat blade has all the teeth on one side, so it's naturally going to cut smoother. A spiral blade is just like a flat blade, except for it is twisted. So it's going to be, it's going to at least feel more aggressive, but a spiral blade itself is not aggressive and I will show you why. And none of what I say is meant to be facetious or, or tacky. Now I'm going to turn this on. This is a Seiko ST21, by the way. You'll notice right now, my hands aren't on it, but I want to explain to you what is not happening right now. What is not happening right now is that it's not cutting. And you may be saying, well, thank you, Captain Obvious. But my point being, that blade cannot cut in any direction that you don't steer it. So as far as aggressiveness goes, that's just the feel of the cut. And that's second nature after a while. But my point of turning that on and not having my hands on it, on a, on a decent saw that's not vibrating all over the place, uh, was to show that that blade will not do anything that you don't basically quote unquote tell it to do. I'm, I'm big on visual examples. Uh, now let's say I want to cut towards myself. I can go as slow as I want. Now the shutter speed between the camera and, and real time makes it look like it's going a lot slower. And it makes that blade look like it's all kinds of wiggly, but it's not. But you'll notice, if you watch the camera and watch my hands, you don't really see my hands moving. And that means that that blade's not going to try to cut any faster than I'm allowing it to. But if I push faster, it's going to cut faster. If I push to the left, it's going to cut to the right, and, and vice versa. I'm not trying to cut any specific shape, I'm just showing you. Now, when it comes to using a spiral blade, for me, I don't know necessarily how others do it, but when I'm coming towards the end of a cut, I will let the flex come out of that blade to finish the cut. Now, it won't always be clear to the naked eye, but I'll uh, take the tension off here to kind of exaggerate it. But as I'm pushing this piece, that blade is flexing. So when I get towards the end of this cut, I stop moving the piece altogether, and I'm trying not to block the light, but I may end up blocking it anyway. As I come towards the end of that cut, I stop pushing the piece into the blade, and the, and although the piece is moving, it's the blade you need to be focusing on for this example. When I get towards the end of the cut, I stop moving the piece, and the blade, the flex comes out of the blade. So the flex coming out of that blade actually finishes the cut. And it's so minute, in, uh, in visuals that you may not see that. But this is not necessarily how to cut a straight line. I will attempt to show you here. Just concentrate when I get towards the end of the line. My eyesight's not real good anymore, so I don't know how well I'll stay on that line. Just concentrate when I get towards the end of that line. You barely notice it because it's not a real big movement. I'm moving the piece right now, and we're going to, uh, you can slow down. See right there, it was very, it's probably less than a millimeter, but I was letting the flex come out of the blade, and that's just habit. When you're doing a single line cut that way, by the way, some people want to know what side of the line to cut on. Now, if that, if that line is part of a design and there's not waste area to either side of it, I go right down the middle of the line. Now, I didn't wasn't in that mindset when I was showing you what I was just showing you, but I aim for the middle of the line because it's, it's meant to be on the line. And that's called veining, by the way, when it's just a single line cut. Now, I'm going to show you some examples here of inside and outside. The advantage to a spiral blade is you can use the blade as a little mini sander. If you want to stay inside that waste area, and creep up to that line and to clean it up a little bit. You can get the little nubs that may be in a little slightly wavy line. It's the same way on the outside. You just got to be more careful the closer you get to the part you're keeping.
Now, these right here are examples of like hair on an animal, whatever the case may be. The shaded area is the waist area. And I'm going to show you how I, I cut these sharp points. I'm going to show you how to get a sharper point. And this will show you from the other side as if you're coming up to the hair from the other side. Now, the flex idea I was telling you about, this is going to be an outside corner on a 90 degree. And that will be the inside corner. There's not much difference in there except for how careful you need to be. Now, I don't know if it'll show on this one because this is relatively strong plywood. Uh, but sometimes where you start can make a difference. Doing a spiral from the inside, a spiral shape from the inside and coming out. So the pilot holes in the beginning. And you have a spiral over here starting from the outside. One of those will snap right out. But when it comes to using a spiral, if you're brand new to scrolling, whether it's a spiral blade or a flat blade, take in mind that you can put your fingers as close. And this is not to promote being dangerous because a scroll saw is one of the safest tools in a wood shop. Now let's say I'm working in a real brittle area right here. You can have your fingers right up next to that blade. It will not hurt you. And you're more likely, if, if you're going to get hurt with a scroll saw blade, it's like a paper cut. And it's more likely to hurt you with a uh, flat blade than a spiral blade. Now, I'm not, I'm only doing this for the proof that it's safe. I'm plucking the blade right now. It does not hurt. So, trust me, when it comes to safe tools, this is a very kid-friendly tool. Now, as with any video I do, if I'm trying to teach you, if I go too fast or if I don't mention something you'd like to know, please ask. When it comes to flat blades, I'm not a very big authority. Another thing you need to know about spiral blades, they are flexing in more direction than a flat blade does. So it's, it's naturally going to break more often than a flat blade. Now, you know, you're cutting with it. It's doing this. And a flat blade does that too, but not near as much because it's only cutting on the front side. But let's get started. Now, unfortunately, I'm not able to zoom my camera in any closer, so I hope y'all are able to see. But I'm, I'm going to cut slower than I usually do just to show you. But uh, the shaded areas on any of these examples are going to be the waste area. So we're cutting the inside out of this circle. Now, right now, I'm cutting just inside that line. So let's say we're going to go way out here. And we want to come up to that line. This is an example of, you know, when your confidence gets built built up. You can cut just to the end, you can cut just to the inside of that line. And then slowly use that spiral to creep up to the line. This will change with confidence. Eventually you'll be cutting right 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 inside the line. But some people it does matter. They want to know which side of the line to cut on. I always cut to the waist side. Unless it's a veining cut, I'll go right down the middle. And we'll do the same thing on the on the outside cut. Okay, now the outside of this circle is going to be the waist area. So, same method, taking in mind that the outside area of the circle is going to be the waist area. So, you got room to play with it. And you do the same thing. If you feel confident, cut right up against the line. If you don't, if you're coming in from out here, and you want to go slightly shy of that line, you can slowly come into it and just nibble away at that line. Because a lot of beginners, forget the circle for now, a lot of beginners seem to be shaky because they feel obligated with the saw going fast, they feel obligated to cut as fast as it's cutting. And you don't have to. That thing can go 90 miles an hour and you don't have to cut any quicker. But just cut right up to the line is at whatever confidence level you have. Now we're going to move on over to what I call hair examples. Now I should be lifting the upper arm on the saw, but that would make too much sense. This is how I do really sharp peaks, you know, because people wonder how can you do something? How can you make sharp cuts with a big fat spiral? <laughs> and I do use number fives because I cut quite large projects. But here is how. What I do is I go past the peak. Of like this part I'm not going to cut the whole hair thing but I go past that peak and I come back to it that gives me a sharper cut and I can show you 
two different ways. One way that I used to do it when I first started out. I'll do that on this peak. I used to stop right at the peak and come back. And you can do that. But you'll see I kind of cut the, the, uh, the height of it down a little bit. And that's, that's okay. Let me go to this other peak over here. Now I'm going to go past this little one. And I'm going to come back to it. And that gives you a sharper line. Both methods work. But I think until your confidence level builds up, go past the peak. I'm going past that peak right now. And I'm just cutting into it. And that's how you get in the same premise when you're doing corners. I'm just giving you both examples in case, in case uh, it's difficult to understand. Now, again, I drew this a little bit sloppily. It's the same premise. When I talk to y'all about letting the flex come out of the blade, sometimes that helps when you have, when you're going into the valleys of cuts like this. And then just like that over there, I'm going past the cut a little bit, coming back to it. It's harder to see in real time because I'm cutting so quick as far as the blade speed. Now we're going into that valley and right about here I'm letting the flex come out of the blade. And you may have to push it a tiny bit but just go slowly if you want those sharp inner corners and so, so forth. Now we're gonna we're just gonna do corners here or right here. We're gonna have an inside corner and an outside corner. We're going to do the outside corner first. And on the outside corners, it's kind of the same as doing hair like that. And I'll explain. I keep calling that hair because I use, most often have that, that look in hair. But you can come past this corner right here to go there rather than stopping right at the corner and turning. Now, that stopping at the corner and turning can be done. But you can also come past it and come back to it, so to speak. I'll do it both ways on this one cut. Now we're on the waist side of the line. I just didn't shade it in. Now if you want to, you can come right up to that corner. Ever so slightly faster since it's a waist area. And then just start cutting this way. You can do it that way. Or you can come past it. Come back to it. That way you have something to calm your nerves. When it comes to doing that. And I'm going kind of quick. So I'm getting a little sloppy here. But. You definitely have to be more careful on an inside corner because let's say this is like a decorative part of a box or something. This is the waist area. We don't want to damage this side of the line. Uh, you want to be more careful coming up to that line. Taking in mind we're on the waist side of that line. And again, this spiral blade will not cut any faster than you're pushing it into the blade and it won't cut in any direction you're not steering it. That's what takes getting used to. Right about here, I'm slowing my feed down. And I'm slowly turning it. I'm going to show you without having my fingers up next to the blade. I'm going to show you the difference between starting on the outside of a spiral and the inside. And remember, each time you can have your fingers right there to stabilize everything, even if you want to be holding the actual spiral. Holding the actual the, the drawing of the spiral, not the spiral blade. I'm not really concentrating on staying on the line. I'm more so doing the shape of a spiral just to show you that from the outside, it's going to be weaker. And the closer I get to the middle of that spiral, see what happened? It broke. And little things like that you will learn as you go. And I know I was being sloppy about whether or not I stayed on the line, but I was giving you the premise of cutting on the shape of a spiral. If you go from the outside, uh, it's going to be a lot weaker. So start from the inside, and I'll show you that. Now, on both of these, 
there again, you can have your fingers right next to that blade and not hurt yourself, but it does help stabilize as does putting a piece of thick tape or taping a business card or playing card down. That gives you what they call zero clearance, only where the blade is coming up through the table uh, is the only hole there. So it, it's more likely to stabilize little pieces like this. And I can elaborate on that in a future video if anybody wants me to. But ordinarily, if I was doing a spiral like that, and for some reason had to come from the outside, I would have been stabilizing it and probably would have had a zero, zero clearance there. But here again, I'm not going to put my fingers there just to show you all the difference. Because it's starting out in the weakest spot, but there's not so much of it already cut out that it's going to weaken it. But still mainly just showing you the premise of the cut. Now, I got dangerously close there. And this isn't specific to a spiral, just any shape you think could get really brittle. Sometimes the the end that you start at is what matters. Now, although I didn't stay right on that line, that shows you that that, st that stayed because we started at the weakest point. But as with any of these things, folks, I don't always think of what people want to know because I've been scroll sawing for so long. So... If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I want to be able to help in any way I can. This channel won't only be teaching. I like to show my work as well. Appreciate you dropping by. If there's anything you'd like to know, ask me, and I will do my best to answer, and we will see you next time. Scroll on.